panelists for the session are Tatiana Kober, President of Pejuba, Tom Chapman, Territory Manager, DHX Media, Yoshia Ayugi, Executive Producer, Turner International Asia Pacific, Srikant Potikula, Co -co uh, CEO, Discrete Arts, Satyajit Kumar, CEO, DSK Entertainment, Sukankan Roy, President, Roy Holdings, and this session will be chaired by Mr. Ashish Kulkarni, founder of Punar Yug and Screen Yug. Can we have a round of applause for our panelists and our chairperson? We would uh, quickly start with uh, uh, the quick introduction from uh, all of our panelists. Uh, what we would do is we will follow a pattern uh, of uh, going through uh, two to three minutes of an introduction uh, from each one of them on the topic. So you can quickly introduce yourself and also give your first views of your uh, on the topic uh, so that we will complete first round and then we'll go with very specific questions uh, that I would like to pose to most of you. And as we move forward, then we will open up to the audience so that we can have an interactive session with the audience at that point in time. So uh, moving actually from uh, left to right, we'll start with uh, you, sir and uh, then move on. Okay, so it's, the topic today is the emerging production and co-production equations in global animation. And uh, to actually uh, start with, we would uh, quickly like to see, uh, you know, the, the whole equations that we've been talking about in the last couple of decades and a, or probably a decade and a half as to how the studios in India, uh, as well as the networks, uh, have been actually looking at the productions and the co-productions. Uh, we uh, we have gone through a large kind of exercise uh, trying to get the co-production treaties also in place. Uh, but the thing is that where, whether we have used any of the treaties or the treaties uh, are making sense or people have actually gone and gone ahead and make co-productions irrespective of the treaties. And uh, we have a large number of people who have done co-productions uh, sitting in the audience also. So we would like to see uh, the network angle uh, and how it's emerging today. Uh, you know, it's very good to see in the pitch documentation about the co-productions and all whether it's happening in reality with the Indian studios is something that is uh, very important to many of the studios who are working here. So I think keeping this uh, point of view in mind, we would start with uh, you first and take it forward. Yeah. Okay. I am Yoshia Yugai of uh, Turner International Asia Pacific. I, I work uh, in original programming mostly for Cartoon Network. Um, so we are also looking at doing various co-productions, but um, we like to keep things simple. So when we try to do co-productions, it could be from anywhere. So we could we would look at Indian projects. We would look at we're also saying to look at more Chinese possibilities and um, uh, anywhere else in the world. Um, like Australia, we have done some. Um, but uh, uh, we like to keep it simple because we are also a little bit complicated structure. We are um, divided into different regions. So if it crosses region, then we also need to include our, our different regions. For instance, if it's a, a French production that we really like, uh, we need to see if we can get our um, EMEA, uh, Europe, Middle East, and, and uh, Africa team involved. Or if they're not interested, if we can still do, do the deal. But um, uh, we try to see if we can basically just do two party deals instead of involving too many different countries. But uh, uh, if there are co-production treaties, it's, it could be interesting for us also from a price point of view if we could utilize uh, different government incentives and cross borders and do maybe a three-party deal, but that's probably uh, the most complicated we would make it. Um, we are looking at the, what we, for instance, we would have uh, an Australian quota for TV. We need to uh, produce or spend so much money in Australia and if they have a, a co-production treaty with say India or if they have a co-production treaty with 
somewhere else where we also need to spend money, or if we can get government grants, then that's something that we'd be looking for. Okay. Shrikant. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Shrikant, uh, co-CEO at uh, Discrete Art Productions. As Ashish said, uh, there are many people here, down sitting also, did a lot of co-productions. And uh, obviously, uh, it's a one of the way uh, to go forward for many Indian studios, collaborating with uh, France, Ireland, Canada, and Australia, and other countries where we can get projects. And maybe this session should be more interactive, addressing uh, questions. If any one of you have any specific questions, because uh, uh, everyone knows, I think, most of what co-productions are about, mm -hmm. and many studios here are involved with it. So it, I hope anyone have any questions, we'll keep it more interactive. and. That way we no, we will definitely keep it that way, yeah. but we would like to know your views on what's uh, the emerging production and co-production equations in global animation as you are already a chief operating officer of a studio who is actually running it. So what's your point of view on that? My point of view is uh, definitely uh, it's uh, as a best way to do work and uh, obviously we need a co-production partner uh, to uh, get the projects going on. Most of Indian studios uh, primarily look for work for higher situation, but as once you open the studio and start going, you also know that uh, this is one opportunity. We cannot say no to it. And uh, there, are, there are so many scenarios and it's all obviously changing day by day with whom you are co-producing. And uh, it's a complex equation. It's not simple and straight. So, I think it's a good opportunity provided uh, you figure out the puzzle right and you do your contract right and uh, uh, you get a right partners. I think it's a definitely opportunity for all Indian studios uh, to be co-production partners. That's okay, can we go on to Tom? Yes. Yeah, hi, my name is Tom Chapman. I'm a, a manager at DHX Media. Traditionally, we had started out as just producers of content as well and distributors. Uh, most re recently, we've gained uh, four channels in Canada, so now we're also a broadcaster, which gives us a different perspective now in terms of what we produce and how we do produce it. Uh, traditionally, I mean, I'll, I'll echo uh, what you guys have said as well, it's gone, gone through treaties. Uh, we've generally gone through Australia, UK, France. Those have been mostly the traditional sort of treaties that we've gone through. Those have worked out for us well, but we are starting to branch out, particularly on um, shorter content in terms of um, treaty or co-productions that we're doing with China and India. Uh, we have an MCN called Wild Brain, which we're using a lot to do um, short form content, which we're doing a lot of uh, co-productions right now with India. So we see it as a very valuable way to get a lot of content out at a, at a good price and at a good time. Oh, that's, that's great. Um can we go to Satyajit right now for the first comments? Hi all, uh, Satyajit Kumar from DSK Entertainment. I'm a CEO there. My view towards the co-production is uh, co-production, finding the right mix, the right brand, associating with it, finding the right partner, and not the last, but finding a way for monetization. Unless and until you do not figure it out, the whole puzzle get mixed somewhere. So you need to know where you are getting into, with whom you are getting into, and what what are those ways wherein your investment comes back to you and you can reinvest. So it's, I'm adding co-production with the co-financing because uh, I'm in the space of co-financing as well. And we have done two co-financing uh, with our partners. So it's very beautiful a space to be in, but you have to be very open and aware about the situation. Hi, I'm Roy from Roy Holdings. Uh, we have done quite a few uh, co-productions with uh, some European uh, countries. We, we are based out of India as well as Europe, so it's easier for us to do certain co-productions. And my take on co-production would be, surely it's not a marriage, but a live-in. We, we need to uh, figure out a lot of things. Um, 
it's not not that uh, simple way in you have to figure out a lot of things around it so maybe we can discuss about that later in this uh, discussion but that is my take uh, after like three core productions that mm. I have done hi I'm Tatiana Kover from Bajuba we're a Canadian um, company mm. We are, we call ourselves an executive production distribution company. So we put together financing for programming through co-productions around the world. And then we carry on the distribution as well. And uh, we have a, an office in France as well as in, in North America. And uh, my take on, on co-productions is they're invaluable. They're, they're really needed in order to put programming together. And where I think it's really interesting in India right now is India is moving from being a service studio company, country only to really wanting to develop its own P and have ownership in what they're doing on a, on a larger sense and maybe having the stories come from their side. And uh, that's, I think, where it's a great fusion of having the Western point of view and the story taking and helping on the design side to, to move these things forward and, and really have you as IP owners. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting uh, point that you make, uh uh, on the on the stories that are coming from here, uh, I think a large number of us who have been involved in uh, doing co-productions in the past, uh, uh, you know, most of the flow actually of uh, uh, the IPs flew from the west to to us. It it was probably looked at uh, India for uh, the cheaper production options, and uh, that's where uh, actually studios pitched in to make sure that they they have. Uh, the production running and they put in money as well as uh, uh, you know skills to to do the production but most of the studios who have actually put in money into the co-productions uh, and committed to the co-productions in the last uh, one and a half decades have not seen money coming back to them and uh, it's a it's a very very difficult uh, a piece of uh, things as to how do you really look at uh, the equation what Satyajit was talking about that it's a uh, it's a beautiful thing to look at, but when you go closer, uh, you know, the financing and uh, getting your money out of your co-production, it's a very, very tricky thing. And uh, some of the countries that actually have done the co-productions in the past, with the co-production treaties in place, have been funded. So there's a principal difference between the studios, like uh, we take the case of Canada, for example, uh, uh, if the studio in Canada thinks of a property, they first think of uh, how much money they are going to raise from the government there and only then look at what are the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle needs to be fixed in the rest of the part of uh, the equation. Whereas the people in India first look at the character and the idea and there's no money from the government. So they make a business plan which is self-funded if network comes in, network gives a very, very small fraction of a money. At the same time, the network has got into a habit in this country where they want all the rights under the sun at a very cheap price. And then the studios get pushed to create the content within that price to make sure that they sustain. And that's where the, the studios suffer over the period of the show and they shut down. And that's the hard reality of the productions in these countries. Whereas you give an example of Australia where you're supposed to spend that much of money, you're supposed to spend because you cannot run a, a network into that country if you're not producing that content from there. And that's enforced by the ministry there. The India has opened the skies without the condition of enforcing that you should produce this much amount of content in the country. And that's where we feel that it's a, it's a very, very raw deal for Indian studios. What's your take on that? I'd have to say, we do, but I'm, I'm not a business guy, so I'm not probably not the No, I, person I, I, I'm not ask just, you, asking you as a, as a Cartoon Network person. I'm asking you as, I will, that's, that's you know, that, say. so gonna, this is something which is, yeah. My own opinion. I think it, um, we do tend to, go to places where we have to spend money or where we can save money. Yeah. So even though we have a show that is originally uh, developed here in India, 
we are actually animating that so outside of India. Yeah, we are aware of that. <laughs> so, but that's because that uh, we have uh, some benefits uh, producing it in that specific country. Um, I think probably you, you do need to lobby uh, in India that there's some kind of uh, financial benefit if you invest in India, for us to invest more specifically in India. But uh, also, maybe you can construct the deals where you do get more of the revenues back if you are able to sell it outside of India with uh, your specific partners. I think, um, but there's a, uh, it's a double-edged sword, I think. If you, if you share the IP and get a bigger percentage of um, the revenue you are co if you co-own the IP that also causes the problem of if one party decides not to discontinue who how are we going to do more to make more money it's good to look at it that way but uh, the fact is that uh, there is no precedence of co-productions with most of the studios and the networks within India as of now Second is that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to say that you need to lobby. Uh, the government says that uh, we are in the process of liberalization and bringing in restriction is against liberalization. So why should Indian talent and studios pay the price when the skies are getting opened more liberally? So it's on to the networks to see how uh, they can actually leverage, whereas we know the fact that of all the countries that you talk about in Asia and Pacific region, the most of the revenue that the networks make is in the country called India. So if they are making most of the money in India, why are they not spending in India? So this is a big question that we have been debating. Uh, I definitely need to seek uh, answers for most of the Indian studios and uh, you know the skills in this uh, country. but. Moving, uh, we will come to this questions uh, as we actually get the audience uh, into the uh, uh, into the question answer. Uh, my question to uh, you, sir, uh, you know, we have an Indian uh, Indo-Canada co-production treaty now, uh, which has taken us about 10 years. 2005, we almost signed the treaty. Uh, then it got stalled uh, because the Culture Department of Canada didn't agree for quite some things. Uh, subsequently, in 2005, 14, we uh, signed it as an audiovisual co-production treaty to, to get most of the people. We got in two delegations to Canada in the last uh, one and a half years. We actually uh, got four delegations from Canada to come to India. But signing co-production is far difficult. Uh, and I would like to draw your attention to a few of the things that is very important. I told you the mindset of how the studios work there versus how the studios work here. And that's a big uh, mindset issue to actually do the co-production because the producers or idea owners in India never think that they would get money from, from the government. So the business plan is entirely different. Second thing is that what we realized taking a delegation last September to Canada, that a, a minimum that would go through the co-production in, uh, in with Canada is if the budget of per episode that is going in for co-production is 100,000 Canadian dollars. That would mean around 52, 53 lakh Indian rupees. Whereas the Indian studios are pushed to make episodes in 18 lakhs. That is like 36, 37,000 uh, Canadian dollars. So what happens is that there is such a big misfit of bringing your shows to that kind of level. So how do you think we are going to bridge this kind of a gap and do co-production? If we have to do co-production with you, there are a large number of producers sitting here right now. How do you propose that we do and bridge this gap? Yeah, I, I suppose it works similarly with any co-production. It really has to do with, I mean, obviously you're saying that comes with the project and the characters are developed and everything, but the, 
a major part of it is, is the financing. And if you don't have the financing, then typically it doesn't get done. And yeah, definitely we're very, we're very lucky in Canada to have various um, facets of financing, whether it be broadcast and our CMF financing and our tax credits. So it is a great place uh, to start, but we do have to fill in some gaps. I think if you're looking at producing it in India and from India, with a co-production with Canada or the UK or Australia. You have to also make sure that it's going to work uh, not only for those two countries, but for selling it around the world. And that, that's where everything is going to come back. And typically, I mean, DHX is in a good, good position as well because we are a producer, we are a broadcaster, and we are a distributor. So there are, there are facets where you can put that together where it does start making sense if you know, DHX is putting up um, a distribution advance as well and then that kind of helps cover the gap that may not be coming from the, in, the Indian studio because yeah. the, the market just isn't there for that. So it's just, those are the ways, you know, various ways like that that you have to find to put the puzzle together to, to make it work. But uh, as you say, definitely it's, it's not as fair or even as maybe it could be. Uh, however, typically in, in a lot of co-pros, um, you know there are thresholds and minimums. You know sometimes even as low as as 15% of the of the budget, and whether that's going to come in from doing the post production or pre or wherever it comes from. So it depends. It de depends on all how the treaty is laid out and where where the money comes in. But definitely yes, financing is. It's a big, very interesting the thing issue. that you would put a distribution advance to some of these properties. My next question is, when are you opening office in India? <laughs> well, this is why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, historically, DHX hasn't had too much of a presence in India. Yes. Uh, we, we've gone, I mean, on a distribution side, uh, we've typically gone through agents or sub-distributors or something like that. We haven't got uh, very much into local broadcasters. If we do make a sale in India, India it's with the, you know, the Disneys and Turners and Knicks of the world. Um, but now, now that we're growing and we're looking at expanding our, our own horizons, yeah, definitely India is very interesting for so us. What so what will it take uh, for us to bring you to India? Um, well, <laughs> just name it. I'll be here. Uh, no, I do. This is my no, not for the conference. We need you no, permanently no, here so that yeah, we no, can meet more often. Studios yeah. can meet you no, more I, often to make sense of all the productions. Yeah, I, I myself look forward to being back here uh, much more often. You know, this is my first time in India. Um, we've seen, if I could take an example, uh, we had no presence in, in China, for example, three years ago. We started going there on a, on a regular basis. Now we have a, an executive uh, with an office there. So we, we see the trajectory of India very similar to what we've been doing in China as well. Thanks. Actually, coming to the financing part, and I think uh, Satyajit and uh, uh, you talked about, uh, you know, how uh, you actually come into the distribution and financing. So. Can you actually describe a uh, couple of case studies for the interest of all of us as to how do we really convert uh, uh, an idea into a show and what can we harp upon in terms of uh, counting on getting the production budget uh, uh, from you, you know, Satyajit's point of view from uh, purely financing and your point of view, having distribution and finance put together uh, in, in that case. So can we have Satyajit and then you? So first, uh, as I have told you in my opening, uh, you know, it's a remark that you know, it's, I have been, you know, it's, uh, pitched the ideas uh, quite often, and for us to look about any property, we have to, you know, first gaze that how good the property is. And for me, anything has to be global. I'm not saying that, you know, what, uh, you know, we are thinking from India, even you know, Indian studios and creators are. You know, started thinking globally. They are not restricting themselves uh, only in you know Asia Pacific or you know Southeast Asia. So there are some contribution from the creation side also had to you know go into that to make that property, make those characters you know appeal to globally. And there are two type of uh, you know uh, category. One category is the, some famous property which already is known to you know people wherein you do not need much of marketing when it goes to the broadcasting or goes to the you know ott or you know talking to distributor for getting your money at least 50 percent covered by you know it's gap financing and second is totally your instinct that how good or bad idea is and to guess that that's why you know everybody means 
most of our colleagues goes to the MIPCOM and Critscreen and elsewhere. So for me to put my money, a single dollar, I need to have either US, North America, you know, a, a distribution lined up or two major territory from Europe lined up and tell me that, okay, fine, this is my, you know, letter of interest. I am on board for any property and I'm ready to put money. That, that's my benchmark. Uh, if it is an Indian product, I, you know, it's in a property and IP, I do not know even if uh, somebody says any broadcaster that, okay, I am on the board, I am not sure as still that, you know, whether I, you know, that excites me enough because it's only talk about Southeast Asia and it doesn't talk about beyond. So it's beyond puzzle has to be, you know, evolved and explain and, you know, talk about that, okay, fine, after, and rightly said by you that all rights taken care, you know, taken by them, that doesn't leave you with anything. So co-production for me is IP creation as well because we, uh, you know, so when we fund any project, we try to retain the IP as well in equivalent to the proportion where we are, you know, putting money and for the long term. So do I trick you that uh, to say you are an Indian, but you actually would only fund if uh, North America is there with you. So you would never fund Indian properties. You only fund American properties. No, no. I will. I will fund Indian property if there, there are you know Southeast Asia is clear, Middle East is clear, two three you know sir, ter territory is clear, and this you know sir, friend of ours come on the board because you know the uh, you know that you know are veteran in this industry. The you know whole production. You know, it's value, you know, it's, uh, it goes into the 4 million, 5 million, 6 million, even sometimes 9 million. So unless and until we do not reach a benchmark wherein the 50% of your money is lined up, as an investor, it doesn't excite anybody. Okay, so before I put that question uh, to her with her point of view, uh, one question to you, whether you look for all the money that is required for production that has been arranged when you get into the co-production, or you look at whether there is a sale in the U.S. The uh, prospective sale, the money, sh you know, let money not be on the, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, there on the, you know, it's, uh, in your account or escrow account. But somebody has committed, given the letter of intent, that is a good enough for me. So you're you're acting more as a private equity to the project, uh, not as a co-producer. You know, it's, uh, my job becomes that, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I'm it's, uh, more in a co-financing uh, co and once I, you know, find some projects, I, you know, look, look forward for the partners, get a studio aligned with me and work towards that. So it's, you know, it's first job is to find the right project and then pitch for it, you know, fill in the blanks wherever the gap funding is required, uh, required and, you know, explore the all opportunity. So you're not answering my question. Would you finance till the production budget is secured? Or you would finance only because there is an American or North American sale? No, it's, even if it's a European, Middle East, some sale has to be, you know, it's, uh, you know it's, uh, there in the book. If there is a sale from two, three territory, it gives me enough confidence to put my money and rest assured that my money can come back. That's a purely, you know, the finance side. I will not put in a money just because of idea and I'm just passionate about the idea to just let my money, you know. So You're still not answering the question, but I'll come back to you with that. For us, when we're putting together a co-production, uh, the the idea comes first. So we are we are actually working with Shimaru on, on something right now where we found the project really interesting, but I felt that it needed a, a lot of tweaking still. So I presented it to the broadcasters internationally. Because even though we're a Canadian studio, we're very well placed. We're almost like an agent, as, as you were saying earlier. I mean, we're a distributor, so we're in everybody's faces all the time, putting co-bros together. And we got the feedback. And once we have the feedback from the broadcasters, we go back and we start reworking the creative. And um, for us, you know, in, in lining the money up, that's the, the, the first step. The hardest step is always getting the first broadcaster on board. And once that broadcaster comes on and you have, say, 30%, then you start looking for the next bit. And for us, we look to Canada first because we're Canadian and we can access those tax credits. But after that, if Canada says, no, it doesn't matter to us, we go then to the rest of the world and see if we can back Canada into it. And uh, generally, uh, we find that uh, we can get the money together <clears throat> with one key broadcaster, some tax credits attached to that, and then two or three other sales. 
And from that point, like, like you say, if the animation studio then comes in, or we have a couple animation studios, but if we're, then we, us we usually look, if it's not coming from Asia, the property, we look to Asia for the final 20, 30%. And for that, they need that level of comfort that there are indeed sales in place, that it looks like it's lucrative through our, through our projections and that they can monetize in the end. And um, for us, we're very happy to share the IP because you know, everybody needs, needs that chance and needs for it to be interesting. Uh, so uh, when you actually say that if it is not uh, initially going from Canada, you first look at some of the other countries, uh, how seriously do you look at India right now? Uh, in terms of ideas, whether you only look at Canadian ideas to be produced this way, or you would also look at India, Indian ideas to be taken the other way around? I think I'm looking at it really seriously right now. I think that India has, has moved forward nicely over the years. They're, they're much more interested in bringing IP to you. And uh, the, the reason that I came here, one of the reasons is I am frequently getting emails from Indian studios wanting to work with us or offering us their services, but I really don't know them. And I also know that there's a big turnover of companies in India. So for me, my big concern is obviously a lasting, a lasting trust issue. Is this company going to still be standing five years down the road? Is it going to work? And that's by building the relationships, which is why I'm here, because I know all the players in, 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 in Europe and you know it's a trust thing for for uh, for doing the Indian uh, the studios and I've met some really great studios that I like to work with we do the hive with DQ and I knew DQ when it was very young and has grown into uh, something bigger where I'm working with Shimaru right now and and really interested to have some meetings with some other companies so it's 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 I'd say it's a priority and I really do think that India has more money now to invest and they're being more savvy like we want to own the IP we have IP can you look at it so that that it becomes a revolving door as opposed to just a one-way service studio street so how interested are you in taking Indian IPs uh, for co-production very interested if I see an idea that I like we're a small medium company but we cherry pick our projects and if we like it we take it on okay so good to know for most of the people in the audience so you, you're going to have a lot of questions as you uh, finish this. But my question to Srikanth and uh, Sukankan, uh, this is very specific. And I think uh, once they give their take, I want you to come in uh, for obvious reason that you're already creating something which I'm going to talk about. You all talked about uh, such a big deal about Europe and uh, America and North America uh, but the largest eyeballs lie here. The largest uh, eyeballs for your uh, programming and the age profile that you talk about lie here. And that implies that the, the brand that you create would equate to the largest eyeballs. It might not pay you equally, but if you have the largest eyeballs, eventually it will pay you. And a lot of case studies are there to prove that. So why are we shying from doing an Asian co-production between India, Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, and you suffice by giving those rights to those countries, your co-production your co would work very well because your production costs would be met. What they have done with role number 21 between Malaysia and India, their production cost is met and rest of the world actually becomes a benefit for you. So why are we shying away from doing more engagements within Asia and not only getting bogged down with the North America or Europe? Because you have cultural sensitivities which works in Asia pretty, pretty seamlessly, pretty well, and very easy to co-produce between these countries. First, I would like to tell why co-production? Why this co-production? tax credits, all this came. This came prima facie just to compete with American content. Like what happening, Cartoon Network today producing all Benton and they're taking a lot of money from India and it's not produced in India. Basically co-productions came just to compete with America on the prima facie. So Canada said all prime time should be Canadian content. Australia same. France same, why should I watch content 
produced in america all the time on my prime time so i need a share of it that said come back to an indian scenario you come up with a great ip in india you go to cartoon network nickelodeon they offer you 10 lakh rupees to produce it 20000 dollars you need to do everything you need to write you need to board you need to animate you need to deliver show and give the ip also everything yeah but wait a minute the same situation is for italy same situation is for canada they are no different if you go pitch an ip uh, suppose i made an ip it's a wonderful property all from india i go to sell it in canada canadian broadcaster liked it australian broadcaster liked it wonderful i am taking this ip they offer you 2000 dollars an episode they offer you 5000 dollars an episode but if it is a canadian co-production they offer anywhere between 30 to 60000 an episode they are twisting arm of cartoon network and nickelodeon which we are not doing we are just letting them do what they want to do same australian co-production if it is of australian official co-production abc disney pays them 60000 dollars an episode all of sudden if in india i think the the, the best indian production i have ever seen may be paid like 40000 dollars an episode suddenly if 40000 dollars an episode comes as a co-production money india will be a very big deciding partner in every co-production it's not a small money that said the ip suppose even for canadians or for italians or australians it's very difficult you make a wonderful ip if you want only australia to pay for all this ip it's not easy so what do you need to do i need to see two or three countries where together can pay for this ip and it has to be hit in australia it has to be hit in canada and also in france that's that's good enough for funding so when you come up with indian ip you want to come up with krishna or beam or even something very very natural to india of course that is 100% rated chota beam is the top ip in pogo but an american kid or canadian kid or another cultural kid don't like this it's not like they can't relate to chota beam so for a content producer there is no option to come up with a content which can be funded with few other territories not our own territory or you can still do it you can st- still we are doing it we are doing motor no, patlo you did of, both of them can coexist no they, though india yes, requires yes. indian specific stories also correct so Man, it can coexist it's too big a market no not problem. to coexist no problem first of all we need to find something that works for us and also for canada something works for us and malaysia something works for us and singapore thailand whatever as you rightly said asia is culturally good so first you need to see official co-production india you need to make networks pay more reasonably good money not 10000 you know 20000 dollars and that has to be clubbed with some malaysian money then you can make a beautiful production i think this is first basis we are struggling either 100% now today if i go to nickelodeon and cartoon network the person acquisition manager says no no i don't want to see any international i want to see shiva beam something like our rural kid can relate to him i don't want to see any of this thing that you are doing pan global i want to see exact that wonderful i i get that but i have only money of 20000 dollars to produce it so it's a choice for us to make either do it in 20000 dollars the ip nickelodeon cartoon work works in india or make an ip that is co-production possibility so even if if these guys come even with 20000 dollars an episode for a co-production with canada it's a good money that's many co-productions here co-producers here will come with the rest of money so, patch it so my my thing is as a uh, as a idea owner and as a producer and as a studio we did go to many uh, many networks in india and showed them a fantastic property which had a we had a plot which can go global like sir said that they are looking at a 212 boy properties 
So like this, you know, every network has got uh, their own uh, take on that. People say uh, 10 plus girls are not uh, seeing, uh, you know, animation. Um, I would say it's, it's not that they are not seeing animation. They would love to see animation. But if nobody is making girl properties, how will they see it? So they will go and see Sas Bahu with their mothers. And that's the challenge. So when you go to uh, people like Ashutosh and many other, don't take me wrong. And then Ashutosh and all these people, all the Ashutosh of all, all channels will tell you, uh, I need an Indian show. You taper it down, you make this Indian, you make this Indian, you make this Indian, you make a chawl, you make a auto rickshaw, you bring that here. And you are no longer an international show. So, you are caught into a situation that even if you have great ideas, you will not click into your own country. And Madam will come and tell you, if you don't have your own country broadcaster signed with you, then how, how do I make a co-production with you? So, Indian studios are in a fix. So, what do we do, Sukankan? In case of uh, co-productions with European countries, what happens is like, already, as you know, I mean, they have their own money, what they call their own money, it's the public money. And uh, they also include what the uh, channels promise them as their contribution. So, yeah. uh, everything that they can, I mean, uh, literally mm -hmm. from their pocket, they don't have any contribution. So, uh, oh, but the best part is there are channels who are buying it at a good price. So, that's where we, we want to make some certain pie out of that business. And, uh, what we generally do is uh, we float an Euro European company and work it out that way. And then we have an Indian uh, company who supports the production and uh, lower the price. So uh, there are tricks in doing that. I mean, most of the guys who are in production would know that. But that's what we do. So you're proposing to make an Indian production, you should open a European company first. I mean, that's what I have done. <laughs> Uh, so I that's mean, the solution. And, and the good part is the uh, IP was ours. And, uh, and they like the IP, they pitched it. Very strange, it's very strange. The IP was ours, they like the IP as an European production house. They pitched to, pitched to their film funds. It got uh, funded. And then it became um, uh, uh, half Polish, half Indian uh, country. It's with Poland. Then we floated a company in Poland. And uh, to get that, because if you're getting that funds from Poland, you have to spend it in Poland. So then, then we floated a company in Poland and then we worked it out that way. So I'm not getting into that. I mean, that's very tricky. And so very <laughs> soon all Indian studios will have to become multinational to uh, make Indian know, properties. You know, as Indians, we are I mean, very, uh, very conducive to guerrilla tactics. Okay. So coming to your example, uh, Madam, we'll, we'll come back to you on the, on the note, but come, like keeping on the Asian part, which uh, Sukankan hijacked it to Europe because he doesn't like Asia too much. Uh, we still like Asia. Uh, we would like to understand if some great idea, like role number 21 is your own idea, you're producing it, uh, have a, a Malaysian uh, money to it. Uh, the thing is, if you get another idea that is also like this, so you keep the Indian rights to the Indian producer and take the Malaysian rights to yourself. Will it work for you, guys? I guess it will depend on uh, how much uh, each party is uh, investing. Sorry? I, I guess it will depend on how much the, each party is investing. Well, that's true. In, in, the Indian studios would be interest, uh, like investing. Right. Many of the shows that we produced, we invested ourselves and then we went to the network. And we already have a show. But uh, we do kind of need to see a return on the investment somehow. So we no, no, also I'm we also have we have one, one, one second. So we we, we do um, uh, we have Indian productions, which, which is the regional production. Then we have uh, Asia Pacific uh, productions, which we which we believe we can show in all the different territories. And then we have an international a more international production where we can show, we believe we can show in uh, Europe and Latin America and then a global. So we have different steps of investment. So going back to uh, why do we 
break your arms for Indian production only is that we don't see uh, uh, an India-specific project as a very big return on investment. I get you, but if there is, Indian studios have also presented you very good international properties. Uh, but uh, somehow it becomes uh, that you don't want to take that on board because probably you don't have a strategy to do uh, that kind of a property which will go global from this region. And that's our concern, whether, we, whether you have that kind of a mandate to take property from India globally. I showed an example before about uh, this bill character that turns in, I mean, yeah, 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 we, and uh, we believe that that could potentially travel. Go global. Yeah. But that goes back to what you were saying, that uh, people in India don't pick up, I mean, the channels in India don't pick up if it's more India-centric. What I meant is, uh, uh, as if you see Canada or Australia, if uh, it's an official Canadian co-production or Australian co-production, the channel pays the co-producer a lot more than direct pickup. Suppose if I make my production and I sell to Canada, they still buy it, but they buy $2,000 or $5,000 an episode. But if it's an official Canadian co-production, they, they, they pay more, 30000 or 60000 60,000 is easy in money. So what the difference between other co-producing -produ countries and India, in Canada, in Australia, in China mainly, outside content is not allowed. You can't put Benton on prime time. You have to put night, midnight, 12 p.m. Benton or any stuff. So if we block, even in Indian channels, that we need to... Uh, the channels can only air content produced in India as a co-production partner. That suddenly changes a lot of scenario. It's good or bad, I don't know. It's, it has to be debatable thing, but that, that is the difference. So, Canada doesn't want to see any content in a prime time, prime time which is not produced in Canada. Same with uh, France, same with Italy, same with England, same with uh, China. Same with Australia. So if we, that one equation is changed, then what happens, people really think, today uh, what Indian network is thinking is, because Chota Beam is a hit and some Motu Patlu is a hit, and in India obviously you cannot afford more than $20,000 or $40,000 an episode. It is the same case for Canada also. We need to understand that. It's the same case for Australia. They can only afford forty or $60,000 then rest of the money is raised because you are co-producing with another country. So if you can give 40,000, like Ashish is saying, if network here can fund 40,000 and 60,000 dollars an episode for an international content, then Ashish can find France or Canada or someone who will bring in the rest of the money. That's good enough money. Then even if I have to put Indian producer has to put some 500,000 or a million dollars, he will get that from his own pockets. So that will change a lot of scenario. Even if you clear $40,000 an episode, if you clear that as an international production, as another uh, problem they are facing, we, we go to any network here, they really want it to be Indian, completely Indian, Indian, looking Indian. What happens is, if, if uh, in that case, the, the advantage for Canada, Australia, or England is all are English-speaking territories. So obviously, in a way, they can create some content which can sell into all in English-speaking territories. But if you restrict so much to India, what we end up is doing so Indian, which we cannot sell anywhere. Maybe we can sell in Thailand or Malaysia. That's it. So okay. what happens? We are making production less than $20,000 or $40,000, one so episode. That threshold has to change. That uh, threshold has to change. Uh, let, me, let me come to you and uh, you, ma'am. Uh, let's forget about uh, the broadcasters. Exactly, exactly. No, no, no just one minute, just forget about the broadcasters. How do you look at if, uh, with given your experience and, and the distribution uh, strength uh, that you guys have. How do we look at, uh, you know, 
releasing the shows uh, digitally first and then go to the broadcasters? And how do you see that global scenario in animation changing? If we have to do some of these productions, why don't we look at that? And I'll come to the Indian guys, if they are ready to take that risk. So you better be prepared when we hear what they have to say. Yeah, no, I, I totally was going to bring that up. I agree with that. And it's, it's such a great incubation strategy, I guess, for ideas and, and growing, developing the characters and everything. If you can, if you can start on a digital short form strategy, uh, maybe even put it, we have at the MCN called Wild Brain, which is a great breeding ground for short form content to try and, and develop shows. Um, I think in your presentation, you brought up Adventure Time, right? Great, great strategy for, for developing IP. And I think with the, uh, I mean, if you're looking purely f from an Indian standpoint, um, the diaspora of India is huge, right? So if you can start building these MCN channels or YouTube strategy or anything with characters that are going to work in different territories all over the world, then you can maybe start growing um, your audience from that, that point of view. And then you're gonna start getting into those bigger conversations with the networks to you know, get into your 11 minute or half hour show. No, you have told what Indians should do. I'm saying, ki, how do you co-produce those kind of properties? Um, we're, we produce mm -hmm. them, uh, we actually are doing one right now with the Cosmos Maya. Mm -hmm. um, on, it's actually on a, a program that's already been done, but it's a shorter form called Brum. And it's working specifically for that digital strategy first because it's, an, it's a nice way to re-enter uh, the character because that show has been done you know, 15, 20 years ago. And to re-enter the brand, we're going short form and are doing a co-pro with uh, Cosmos Maya. So we are definitely doing that strategy. Sure. It's definitely a growing area. We've just signed on with a U.S. studio that does big big television for traditional television, but they were doing some online content on a YouTube channel. And it has really exploded. They've got seven million hits for one of their things, which is um, story time with Mrs. Booksy. It's all very cheap, uh, cheap production quality. They, they admit it, they sort of bang them out, put them up. A crafting show with Crafty Carol, a story time with Mrs. Booksy with a green screen and she jumps into fairy tales, like super low quality stuff, getting tons and tons of views. And they've just started a superhero series as well, which is also getting great ratings. So they've hired us to start looking at that content to bring to traditional broadcast, because I guess it's not monetizing enough yet, and they really want to turn it into a global brand. So we're looking at it from the perspective of A, selling it internationally as is, as SVOD uh, stuff for SVOD, or for broadcasters if they want to, to, to grow their, their SVOD offerings because it's, it's there and it's produced, but we're also meeting with broadcasters at MIPCOM to show them the whole thing and see about packaging it into a brand new series of, of Half Hour. And this Drupendous, this superhero show that has been on air for just a short while, but collectively their stuff has over half a billion views. They, they have all the data to show who's been viewing it, who likes it, they've got the feedback from the kids, how many views. So like you were saying, calling it an incubation, we can turn around and take that now to the cartoon networks of the world and, and, and see if there's an interest to turn that in. So absolutely, that's, that's a big area, you know. And so getting the eyeballs is the, is the big thing. You can make that content, but making sure, sure. that people are seeing it. So, so uh, having heard this, Satyajit, uh, if, if Sukan can, comes to you with a great idea, which is not sold in US or Europe, but can be released on uh, uh, release on a digital platform, will you fund it? We will come to you because you you have to open office here. Yeah. He already has office here, so we will first go to him. Give me, give me a couple of weeks. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, OTT at present is uh, catching a lot of uh, eyeballs. Like Netflix has been opened uh, all across uh, globe and Netflix is providing high quality content and they are, you know, it's even uh, uh, directly ordering the shows and funding it as well. So I'm not talking and giving an example that you know so somebody or Sukanto has to have uh, you know Netflix on the board and then only I will fund. But some you know there there are many you know multiple of you know it's, uh, OTT and there are you know it's lot many monetization possibilities has opened up because of OTT platform and even broadcasters are taking a lot of. Uh, you know, with a pinch of salt, they are taking it, okay, fine, the somebody has come to challenge them. 
So if that possibility is there, I am ready to look at, you know, so look into it. I will mitigate my risk, but yes, I am open to, you know, so, yeah, put my money on onto it if the, you know, so property is good enough and it has potential to go and travel global. Okay, so guys, uh, you we'll know talk. the next guy whom you need to really talk to. Uh, so having said that, how ready are the Indian studios to take a bet? Uh, is my question to two of you. Uh, I'll tell you, there is a precedence to it, and uh, I mean Ashutosh can verify it. I mean, there's a uh, as you know, Sanjay Raheja has Apu has Apu series, I believe. Apu series. Uh, he had been like uh, monetizing well, pretty well on Apu series for a long time. And it was an entire YouTube content, entire YouTube, not not even uh, SVOD. So, <clears throat> uh, and uh, like after two or three years, they went to uh, Pogo to, I mean, this is one of the rarest case when uh, the movement has been from the digital to the traditional medium. Otherwise, it has been all, always the other way around. So, uh, there has been a precedence and it, um, Maybe uh, Cartoon Network has seen a lot of um, potential into that content. And even if they're running on YouTube, it is still, I believe they're running parallelly on bo both the channels. So it is running uh, on uh, YouTube as well as the traditional medium on Pogo. So there has been a precedence and I believe uh, there can be a future. So how ready are the Indian studios to take it? Oh, we are all ready. I mean, with yeah. Satyajit with us, <laughs> you know. I I'm saying how ready are the Indian studios to take a risk of, of online? actually releasing it on online and then going on. I think already people are doing it. Uh, if I, I met one studio called Video Gyan in uh, Bangalore, they are already doing great job with online. The little bit trouble with online is you need to fund the production yeah. and the cash gets flow. Yeah. No, that's but exactly was my question. Yeah. It, it all depends on risk appetite. <laughs> so. And uh, I think… Uh, no, but it also gives you a leeway that you actually do uh, small bits uh, like uh, what yes, they tested with 15 seconds and 2 minutes. Because and format, you do number has of them, yeah. format has changed with the consumption online. You, you, any, anymore, you don't have to really think of uh, 26 episodes. You can just start with 8 episodes or 10 episodes, 13 episodes and put there on Netflix or YouTube or content format and consumption has changed because if you put eight episodes just people are watching it over weekend and after Netflix uh, has come the schedules the delivery schedules have also changed they are not asking you know like one they don't have time one year they are asking just in four months can you give me this entire season okay so uh, we will actually would have uh, liked a little more of discussion on the feature film areas uh, I would have uh, loved if Anand had put uh, Madhavan also in the panel so that he would have spoken about a little more on the feature film uh, animation productions. Uh, anyway, he is there on a couple of other panels. So, uh, we will open quickly for some questions and then uh, we will see how we can actually do with time. So, any of you having any questions, please? Yes, sir. Sir, a uh, question to I think fellow studio mates as well as… Uh, uh, is there intra co-production in Canada like do studios inside Canada co-produce something together yes they're called interprovincial uh, co-productions so Ontario and BC each one has different tax credits and then they they tap into that so yes yes they do um, sometimes one has to be the ma majority uh, holder but yes they're done and uh, does that reduce the, is the, the choice is more from risk mitigation point of view or is it more from uh, uh, the funds, uh, access to the funds point of view or is it more uh, thinking that playing by the strength, that there is a pre-production unit and a production unit and a, something like a shell rocket fund or bell fund, something like that. Yeah, I think it, I, I think it would be needs based, you know, that that there's a studio out east in Nova Scotia where if they do the animation there, they get 65% tax credits, but it's really an IP that was created in Ontario, so they'll do the pre-production and get whatever they can there. So it's it's using all the provinces to their most advantage. To fellow Indian studios and mates, do you think that something like, <clears throat> like that makes sense? I think people in 
Hyderabad, I guess Andhra and Telangana also has some more benefits than people uh, over here in Maharashtra from funding and incentives point of view, I guess, which was part of the draft policies that you were leading with. Do you think that can, that can push intra-provincial co-production? Does it make sense? Well, actually, it depends purely on the studios. Right. Uh, we have produced Shaktiman like that okay. uh, with various studios uh, in India. Was that as a co-production, not like a service, it was a co-production. No, it's a co-production. So, of course, a little bit of service was also given out because right. of the time constraint, but, uh, you know, it's, it purely depends because we don't have a benefit of tax credits and funding. So, the way the studios can get together and produce it, it's the initiative of the studios, how they can get together and produce in India. It's as simple. Anybody else? Okay, yeah. I hope I'm audible. Uh, so. I build games, uh, but right now the question is more as a spearhead for an incubation cell here in Hyderabad. A uh, lot of requests come from startups who are trying to build IPs. What's the stage that they should reach out to you? I mean, we fund them to a stage where they go online, they'll set up some videos in YouTube or they have a million hits or whatever. But what is the stage that they typically should reach out to you guys? I, so, I hope you would have attended the earlier session. Uh, so, he gave a very, very elaborate and a good, uh, a minimum point program that you should be prepared to pitch. And I think if you can have, take this offline, uh, that this presentation has just happened, uh, would definitely benefit. Anybody else? Nowadays, we have uh, cartoons like Roll Number 21 and Chota Bheem. I understand one fact that uh, we are trying to inbuild our culture in the children who are watching these cartoons, our culture. But I just had one, uh, I, I'm not really satisfied with the quality of these cartoons. To be honest, these cartoons uh, focus on slapsicity more than wit. I guess as, chill, as, as a child, I remember watching cartoons and I thoroughly enjoyed them. I think even at this age, I would still enjoy them. But if I am sitting with my younger sibling or my younger cousin, and watching a rule number 21, I feel like why are people producing such products? Uh, I can answer because we are not getting right kind of money, so we are trying to manage. Exactly. Uh, within that money, whatever can be given. Um, but the issue is, uh, in terms of uh, the creative call, uh, you know, that can be answered to you offline with uh, the networks. They have their own reasoning. But you would ask anybody who is passionate about the content and who has already gone ahead and produced the content with the right quality. We have done that with Little Krishna. We have spent extra money uh, to make it happen the way we wanted. And we approached the network only after that, after all the 13 episodes were made. So there are ways and means of doing it as far as uh, the creative part is concerned and the content part is concerned. On the commercial side, if we are getting paid better, India has got all the ability to produce best in the world. So on that note, uh, dear friends. Uh, uh, just, just, a, just a minute, I just uh, want to just finish with uh, chance uh, curiosity mm -hmm. that for fellow studios, as RCCJ has done for Saktiman, but on the you know, it's global perspective, as you have given example of Canada, I urge and request the fellow studio, if you can collaborate much more open without keeping something only close to your heart, and do something together for an ecosystem, I think you can do much better, you can achieve much better together, rather than, you know, it's doing in a, you know, in a, uh, you know, in a sideline and doing something together. So more collaborative attempt has to be made among you, and I am sure you can do much better. Yeah. And answer so to we, we would question. love <laughs> We would love to make it tri-party by you funding and two of us uh, getting together. <laughs> Definitely would do that. Yes, she can last word. We need to answer, close. Yeah. Answer to his question yeah. is, there is Chota Beam, there is 21. If you turn the channel, there is also Disney, all the wonderful stuff. But still people are watching it. You have Avatar releasing and also your Indian Telugu movie releasing it. Yeah. The difference is, the kids can relate to it. And often I find, all, all the time it's not quality of the animation, it's also storytelling. So, <laughs> so, yeah.
it's humor if you if yes, you watch sir. some of the adult comedy in us those quality of that that cartoons like south park or family guy or some other things uh, is even worse than chota bhim but they are no 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 just one minute just one minute. don't confuse no, no. <laughs> those are adult adult shows but what i said is not to get into that area you talk about that area to the content uh, guys they will give you the reasoning because they are doing research on a day to day basis okay so there is a generation gap between you and your cousin okay <laughs> and when you get your kids and if you understand what the kids are doing then then you are not in the right space it does see the thing is some of these examples are very universal and we should not get carried away by one or two examples we need to really see what is trending today twitter trending and yeah, news goes with that twitter trending yeah. so we need to understand where we are going how we are going i would not get into the creative part of it because we are talking about more of a business here you can always take a creative take and debate with uh, uh, ashutosh of the world uh, and he would tell you uh so many reasons why your show will not work and he will only tell you two reasons why it should work so you need to look at concentrating on those two reasons if you want to sell it to him okay so that's the lesson that we need to learn uh on the pitch document and uh, and and otherwise so on that note we would definitely uh, look uh, at giving a big round of applause to all the audience who actually been very patient and of course all the panelists who have flown from various parts of the world and the country to come here and uh, you know take this wonderful session forward thanks a lot anand uh, for arranging this and thanks a lot indywood for making this possible for us to have such a good and open interaction thanks very much